What is going on guys? Welcome to episode number 7 of our Texas Rangers franchise. We're kicking this one off with the NL Futures and the AL Futures All-Star Game here in Progressive Field in Cleveland, Ohio. Casey Mize in the Detroit Tigers organization getting the start for the American League Futures. And you guys can see the position players there. So the starting nine. We have two guys in the Futures. Julio Pablo Martinez, Alexander Palma, and interesting that uh, Martinez is an all-star here. He's hitting 192. So I don't know exactly why they picked him to be a part of this game. I'm not sure. Maybe it's just a, a consensus ranking that he's in the top 100. That could possibly be it. But we see here Casey Mai is going to get a strikeout early on against this National League Futures lineup. And this is a guy that recently just threw a no-hitter down at the AA level in real life. So we see there's lineup. Nick Senzel, Paven Smith, two Cincinnati Reds from last season's franchise and MLB 18, the show. But Nick Senzel obviously up with the Reds right now, hit his first major league hit yesterday and actually no, uh, Friday and then had a home run on Saturday, his first major league home run on Saturday. So Paven Smith obviously in the Diamondbacks organization, but he's a guy that I, I actually really like, and I, I think he's going to be a pretty darn good player uh, for the Diamondbacks here in the future. So we see that we get out of the inning. American League is out of top of the first. Let's go to the bottom of the first with Alexander Palma coming up here against Keller as the leadoff hitter. He's going to swing and a miss at a sweeping curveball, 75 mile an hour, low and away. That's going to be the first strikeout on the game for Keller. So Palma strikes out. He he can do that every now and then. He's got to watch out for that. But we see that Martinez is going to be batting in the sixth hole. we got Vladimir Guerrero Jr. batting in third. Bo Bichette, number two. Michael Chavis as the designated hitter, who's just on an absolute tear right now uh, for the Red Sox in real life. Luckily, I got him on my fancy team. What, what? But here's Julio Pablo Martinez for his first at bat. And here's a long fly ball deep to right field. It's going to get off the base of the wall. And he's going to roll in to second for a double. American League is already winning this game right now, one to nothing. So to get on base right there for Martinez and put a good swing on that, that's really a good sign, especially in an all-star game. And he's hitting 192 on the season. So maybe things are starting to turn the corner for him. We'll just have to see how that pans out uh, as the franchise series goes along. But American League did lose. Oh well, no big deal. Just trying to get guys some experience against top competition. That's really what this game is all about. And showcase their skills. That's really what this thing is all about. So that's the box score there. NL Futures winning this game 4-1. to one. And now it's time for the Major League All-Star game, guys. We do have Joey Gallo coming up here in rainy progressive field. Ah, oh, that sucks, man. A rainy night in Cleveland for an All-Star game. Right? Actually, all-star game side events. Not very fun. But Gallo is going to advance to the next round against Zach Cozart here. Hitting, how many did he hit? He hit 12. So he needed 11. Well, he needed 12. He got 12 in order to take Zach Cozart down. He's actually hitting really, really well. Really well for the Angels. Hitting a lot of home runs right now. But we can see that Gallo is kind of struggling here in the second round. And he's going to call that timeout just so... He can get some get some more energy back going here. Where's the Gatorades? Feeding some Gatorades. Going up against Reese Hoskins. Luckily, though, he does get to nine. So we're going to fast forward here just a little bit. He does get to nine. Finally hits that last home run as he had mid-energy left. So really clutch job right there by Joey Gallo. Well-timed timeout. So he's going to advance to the next round. And he's going to it's going to be the finals, guys. He's, he needs to beat Polka. A Chicago White Sox, and it doesn't look too good right now. There's fly balls all over the place, foul balls over the place, not not really getting there into the home run stand. I mean, look at that. He's got 13 to 6 right now. He ended up calling a timeout to get that energy up. A minute 15 to go, and finally gets one. No, he didn't get that out. 13 to 6 still, and here's a long fly ball way back. With about a minute left, that one does fall. It's going to be 13 to 10. And with 10 seconds left, he does get that 11th home run. And time is going to expire here after this swing right here. So it's a really good job by Gallo to put a good swing on it. But is it going to have enough carry to get out? It is 367. And that thing just had 
a lot of loft to it, but he did have that 30-second bonus time. So we we do have the odds are in our favor right here, but this one's going to fall just short. 20 seconds here. Got about two swings. Two swings but because by the time th this one gets out, he's got 10 seconds left to go here to get this swing off. And that one just went out, so it is now tied. 10 seconds to go here. You got one swing left to go. Here's a fly ball deep to center field, a little bit towards the left, and this one's going to go. Awesome. Joey Gallo is going to beat Polka for the Home Run Derby Championship in 2019. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Got to love it. Two American League players going after each other right there but Joey Gallo is going to be your home run derby champion just don't get that thing wet you're going to have to dry that thing off you don't want any stains on there no rain stains baby put that into the trophy cabinet for Joey so let's take a get a, let's get a little update here Patrick Wisdom hitting really well down in triple A Fuentes still kind of struggling a little bit Andy Abanez hitting 327 so we're kind of looking for that third base backup to Cabrera or possibly the guy that's going to be coming into the third base split type of role with Josh Fuentes it could be Patrick Wisdom but we'll have to see how that's going to all pan out but we will be making some trades here I just wanted to get you guys some updates as to more of the the notable players here Luke Farrell 595 just not very good man just not good at all got to step it up Rafael Montero pitching really well at the AAA level as a starter. I know he's listed as a relief pitcher, but he, he is starting. Scott Kingery, I think it's going to be way too rich for our blood here to even pull that move off. They were asking a ton because he got that A potential. But here's a trade that I like. Luke Farrell is struggling, man. And we got to get him out of here. Like He's just not really going to pan out for us. He's a little bit on the older side of 25 okay so he's like 28 i think so it just doesn't make a lot of sense for us to hold on to that type of triple a pitcher so we're gonna make this move Raynal delgado and cody anderson i like cody anderson in that bullpen type of role that flex starter type of role it seems to fit and i'll actually post a link in the description for you guys to check out Raynal delgado who's 18 very very young shortstop i like where he's headed in his career very very nice swing and when we look at this trade offer to the Tampa Bay Rays, we're going after Tyler Frank, Nathaniel Lowe, and we're giving up Jet Bandy and Nolan Fontana. So two guys that, you know, you wouldn't think that we would even want to get rid of, but, I mean, we're trying to get our young catchers some, some time here. And shortstop, we've got a lot of young guys, and Nolan Fontana just doesn't seem to fit that mix in what we're trying to do for the future. But... I'll also post a link in the description for these three players here from the Rays so you guys can go check them out as well. And I really like these players. They're winning type of players, and I think this is a good move for us because we do get younger and we do we do get some more depth in our positional players. And then Casey Sadler, you know, he's a very competent type of starting pitcher. I think that he might be able to make, make some make some noise down in AAA and possibly get the call up to be a relief type of guy. So I do like that move. So here is the new roster. We have Nathaniel Lowe at the AA level. I think he should probably get pushed up to the AAA level. He's a 61. He's already ahead of Yanyo Perez. With that B potential, I think it's worth it to try to get him into that AAA mode and, uh, and start doing some good things. So Tyler Frank, a 58 with a C potential. We're going to move him down, get him some at-bats. There's no reason why he needs to be going up against Patrick Wisdom or any anybody like that. So we see that Josh Morgan, after we traded Jet Bandy, there's an opening here for backup catcher. We're going to move him up to get that 62 overall with that B potential going a little bit more. So that's a really good move, I think, for Josh Morgan to get up at that AAA level. All right, let's take a look at some trade offers for Shin Su Chu. And just looking at it real quickly, guys, I mean, there's teams that are interested here, but he's a 69 overall right now. You got to move him, right? You would think that you have to move him. But the return that we're going to get back from these teams doesn't look like a whole lot, which is to be expected because it is Shin Su Chu. He's 36 and he's regressing. So it makes sense. But there's not a whole lot of teams out there that can take on that, that salary cap hit. So we're moving on. We're going to keep Shin Su Chu on the roster. Let's look at another trade here to try to bolster this bullpen. Lance Lynn making $10 million per year. And we could get this guy, a left-hander, Chris Rusin, out in Colorado. He actually had some pretty, pretty decent seasons, but he has shown the propensity to struggle a little bit. 
He's 32, so he doesn't really fit the rebuild type of mode, but he's a 77, and he's a left-hander. And we only have one left-hander in our bullpen currently. And honestly, that's not very diversified enough for my liking. So we're going to pull the trigger on this trade. And then just taking a look at John Mar Gomez's numbers. He's 31. That's 64 overall, 5 ERA. That's not good enough. So we're going to send him down to AAA. D potential. You got to do it. So that leaves an opening now for backup third base job. And Patrick Wisdom is going to get the call back up. Fuentes is already up to a 70 overall. But Wisdom is going to kind of duke it out there a little bit. We're also going to move Rafael Montero to the 40-man roster and then call him up to the Major League team, which makes us have an excess of players at the Major League team and a deficiency at AAA. So we got to move somebody down from the big leagues to AAA, and that's going to be Kyle Dowdy because we did add Rafael Montero back to the club. So here we go, guys. Let's see if it ends up working. We are 49-55. and 55. Taking on Marco Estrada and the Oakland A's at O.co Coliseum. But they, they also call it Ricky Henderson Fields. But you know what? I'm just going to call it the Coliseum, just like, just like it always used to be. Here's the starting lineup for the Texas Rangers here. Logan Forsyth getting the start, and we can see him up to bat here. He's got a 2-2 count. This is eight pitches so far for Marco Estrada. I always like to bring up the amount of pitches that are being thrown here because it really kind of gives you guys – the idea and the scope of what this at bats, how this at bats been going so far. So he was down 0 and 2, and then brought it all the way back. Fouled a bunch of pitches off, taking the close ones there. As you guys saw, the nice and high one, and then he gets a base hit to center field, kind of breaking away there from Chris Davis. And I gotta say, that's a really good at bat for Logan Forsythe. A really good approach by him to take it the other way, and. Nice job to get on base here. So here is Elvis Andrews, and he's going to strike out on that curveball. And Estrada gets his first strikeout on the game. So here's Joey Gallo in a 1-2 and two count, and he's also going to strike out. So not a good job here by the Rangers' top three hitters. Try to get that get that weight back a little bit, you know. Wait on that, wait on that curveball, wait on that off speed. But we'll see how the rest of this, uh, this game goes here. So here's ground ball, Mike Miner getting the start. And Guzman's going to be able to make the play here for the first out. And here's Jerickson Profar, the former Texas Ranger. Going to lift a fly ball out to center field. Delano DeShield is going to camp underneath that one. And through five pitches in, Mike Miner has been wildly efficient. And here's Steven Piscotti, ground ball in the hole to Elvis Andrews. He makes the nice play across his body. Got to love it. So Rangers get out of the first with no hits allowed. Here is Nomar Mazara, going to get a nice slider right there and going to deposit it right back into right center field. Chris Davis going to field it off the carom, and Mazara is going to get in with a leadoff double. Nice. 22 pitches, second inning, and that was Mazara's 22nd double. 22s are, twos are wild, guys. So here's Josh Fuentes. First at bat, you guys have seen him in this series. He's going to fly out to right field. Steven Piscotti makes the play. Mazzara cannot advance. We do have a base runner now on first base. And Kiner Falefa, oh, ball low. Fedgley can't handle it. He's going to toss it over to third and nothing doing. So we do have one down. A fly ball will get the run in. So Kiner Falefa, just do your job. He does get a curveball that he, ooh, he puts a charge into that one. Left fielder camping underneath this one. That's Robbie Grossman, but... He's going to be able to make a strong throw here. But, oh, third base. Oh, man. Yowza just got in safely. And luckily, we did get the run in before that tag was applied. That would have been a pretty dang sucky situation. It still would have been nothing-nothing at that point heading into the bottom of the second. So here's a ground ball right past third and shortstop. Grossman can't come up with it and make a really strong throw over to, over to home. Run will score. So DeShields gets an RBI. Single. It's going to be 2-0, but not for long, as Chris Davis is going to come up big time and get a solo shot for his 22nd home run on the season. It's going to be a 2-1 game. So the A's inch a little bit closer here. Here is Josh Fedgley going to hit a fly ball to center field, and Delano DeShields camps underneath this one, makes the play. Let's go to the bottom of the third now, and we get a little jam shot by Piscotti. is going to fall right in between second base and center field. Now got runners on first and second. And Chris Davis coming up again 
in an 0-2 count. And you want to oh, you want to attack him a little bit right there, man. Don't get too cute. But Mike Miner gets a wild pitch, and Kiner Falefa cannot handle it. So here is a fly ball to right field. Mazzara gets underneath this, gets a strong throw off, but not in time. So the run will score. So Chris Davis gets another RBI, this time on the sack fly variety. Here's Kendry's Morales coming up in the bottom of the third. Runner on second still, 2-2. Two -two. And here's a line drive right back to Mazzara. Got to make a good throw. Strong throw. Ooh, right Ooh, <laughs> on a frozen rope, man. Wow. I like to see that. I like to see that. It's going to hold the runner at third. He wasn't even going to try it. And then Matt Olson coming up. And, oh, yeah, strike out. That was really that was really needed, guys. So Mike Miner threw three innings, 52 pitches. So not very efficient. The A's are coming out with a nice game plan here, trying to attack him and attack him early. And uh, it's, it's showing. So 2-2 two -two game right now. 79 pitches, though, for Marco Estrada. Runners on the corner. Ooh. Really close pitch right there taken by Elvis Andrews. Really good plate discipline right here. That is his 80th pitch. So neither pitcher being very efficient so far in this game. This is where you can kind of make something happen. Here's a line drive to center field. It's going to drop. It's going to drop. A run is going to score. So Andrews comes up huge and makes it 3-2 to two in the top of the fifth. Runners on first and second here. Joey Gallo also has a chance to do some damage here in a 3-0 count. Do you swing or do you take? He's swinging, and here's a here's a line drive to right field. That's Piscotti makes a strong throw back in, and now Mazzara comes up, and oh, that's a bad pitch. Bad pitch to swing at. There's not much you can do with that. Just got over over anxious right there, and just didn't put a really good swing on it either. So. That's going to end the inning for the Rangers, but we do get the lead back. It's going to be 3-2. to two. Let's go to the bottom of the fifth. Runners already on second and third base. First base is open, and we're not going to allow Chris Davis to hurt us. So we're going to go ahead and pitch to Kendrys Morales here with the bases loaded and one down. Luckily, though, Kiner Falefa keeps that one right in front of him here, so it's going to be a ball, ball one. Don't get too cute here. Try to go right after him, get that ground ball. But we don't. A hanging slider is going to get in for a base hit, and that's going to be an RBI for Morales, and we still are not out of this danger zone yet. Still bases loaded with one down, and here's a fly ball to DeShields. Got to make a play if he's tagging. He's not, luckily. That was a good throw, though. Really good throw. It was out of line. One hopper right to catcher. It's good stuff, but it's still going to be 3-3 three three here. 0-2 oh, count, and oh, yeah. Matt Chapman strikes out after the mound visit, and Miner's pumped up, so at least he's keeping us in the game here. Nine hits allowed, eight hits given up by the A's to the Rangers, so it's not like we're totally you know, letting this game slip away from us. This is a hard-fought battle between both squads here. So 92 pitches for Marco Estrada, and he finally gets out of the top of the sixth here. So let's go to the bottom of the sixth, and in a 2-0 count here, that's going to be a double off the wall in that left center field gap. So luckily, get it back in, hold that guy to a triple. But uh, Marcus Simeon going to get in for another another extra base hit here. And, oh, Logan Forsythe, what are you doing? He can't even get control of him to make a play. And the run's going to score, guys. So an RBI single scores Simeon. It's going to be 4-3. to three. So here's Profar getting the double play ball that we want. Here's a nice turn. Andrews with the nice flip back over to first base. We do get out of the inning, but that run will score. It's going to be 4-3. to 9-1-2 coming up in the top of the seventh. We're facing off against a new pitcher here. That's Trevino, but he's going to end up walking to Shields, and that's not something you want to do because he's got some speed, but he does the little slide step in Fedgley. Oh, the tag. Profar applies the tag and it's going to be an out at second base. We don't get the we don't get the stolen base and Forsythe's going to ground out to slick fielding Matt Chapman and the inning is over. So the Rangers mini little threat here doesn't come to fruition. We're going to go with Cody Anderson here and against Steven Piscotti. That's a nice cut fastball low and away. And this is why I like Cody Anderson. He's got some veteran experience, he's got that starter slash reliever experience there for Cleveland. It's a pretty good player, and oh my goodness, Forsyth 
can't make the easy play at shortstop. It was in the shift. He should be able to make that throw. It's easy. He just Chuck Knoblocked it. If you guys know that reference, look him up. Look him up. So bottom of the seventh, 2-2 two -two count here with Davis at second base and Anderson going up against Kenry's Morales here. And Morales has just given him the, the most difficult at-bat that he's had to face so far in his outing here thus far. There's a fly ball in foul territory. Going to make the play is Ronald Guzman. So we do have two down. And against the right-hander Anderson, it doesn't seem to be a good matchup. Matt Olson has got a ton of power, so might as well pitch to Robbie Grossman or Matt Chapman, or we're going to get the out. So nice job there by Cody Anderson to limit the damage done. Facing off against Ryan Buchter. Strike three. Elvis Andrews strikes out on a high and inside fastball. It was a really good pitch. Probably got the call. I think that that was a little too close. But regardless, you might, I mean, you got to swing at it. If it's close, you got to swing at it. It's a good pitch by Buchter to, to realize the situation here. So here's Joey Gallo still down one run looking for a big time boosh, but we're going to get a walk instead. So do get on base here, lefty on the lefty. And here is Nomar Mazzara with a slider. Outside, Chapman to Profar to Olsen to get the double play. Rangers are done for their half of the inning. Let's go to Sean Kelly now. Runner already on first base, and here is a ground ball to Fuentes. Can't make the play, though, at second. Going to stick with it, get the out at first. So good job by Fuentes to just stick with it here. So here's Profar coming up, and he's going to pop up. To third base, Fuentes, the infield fly rule is in effect. Runner was already out no matter what here. So here's Steven Piscotti going up against Sean Kelly in a nice pitch. Keep us in the ball game, baby. Strike three. Slider to the outside. So Blake Trinan has already got 30 saves so far in this 2019 season. Fuentes coming up as the first batter here in the top of the ninth, and he's going to end up grounding out to Marcus Simeon. And we also get Ronald Guzman over to Chapman on the broken bat down the line. He almost beat that out. So good hustle there by Guzman, but he's going to get thrown out for the second out. And Kiner Falefa doing his best in a full count to put a good swing on that. And Chris Davis is going to corral it for the third out of the inning. Oakland wins this one, guys. I will see you on Thursday for episode number eight. Where? I'm not sure what we're going to do because I haven't even played that yet. <laughs> so leave a comment in the comment section below if you guys like the, the trades that we ended up making. Again, the players and some of their videos and their scouting profiles are down in the description below as links to separate YouTube videos. So please go check those out if you're interested in that. And uh, let me know how you think this Texas Rangers team is looking for as far as depth-wise goes as we go into the future. I'll see you guys then. As always, peace.